If you're in engineering, releasing your shadow self, or at least seeing it and embracing it, is something super important. Very important because a lot of engineers don't do it, and it really holds them back in their careers and makes people around them kind of close off because they can't trust the person if they can't trust themselves. Now, you might think that embracing your shadow self might be scary. Well, it probably is going to be scary. So you need to think about your deep, dark desires, and you need to give them some attention. And I'm not saying go feral and embrace them, but have some self-awareness and try to think of your proverbial couch and get things out from underneath your couch and try to figure out how you operate and what your deep, dark desires are. And you should stop thinking about them as bad and wrong, and you should start embracing this side of yourself instead of trying to turn a blind eye to it. Because turning a blind eye to it is only going to be short term, and it's not going to lend you any favors long term. So I'm not trying to tell you to act or be destructive or anything. I'm telling you to acknowledge, understand, and accept the dark parts of your psyche. By embracing your shadow, you can actually turn it to an advantage because you can take that dark aspect of yourself and you can go and use it to be more productive, get more done, and pay better attention. So your inner shadow work and your new awareness that you'll have will make you more productive than if you just shun this inner part of you that you are turning away from. So how can you start working on your self-awareness to see your dark desires? Well, when you start to feel your dark desires, when you feel your dark desires, you should stay present and aware. You should not just switch away or turn off completely. You need to allow yourself to feel the discomfort and unease that comes with your shadow self when you first start to confront it. So you're going to need to dive into your past, confront those unresolved traumas, and understand their impact on your present. And as you do this, you need to embrace the lessons that you learn. Don't just discard them. Again, we're trying to increase your self-awareness. So have the self-awareness to see when you're trying to turn away from things and trying to not learn the lesson. Because that's almost the definition of insanity, doing things or doing them multiple times exactly the same way and expecting a different result. You're also going to need to practice self-compassion and forgiveness. You need to recognize that you have flaws and imperfections, but they also don't define you. If you have had something traumatic happen to you, I find it's helpful to think about trying to become more anti-fragile. So anti-fragile, a great analogy or visualization of it is a broken pot that's been put back together with gold in between. So you have shown that you've been taken apart and you put back together. And I would say it's more beautiful put back together with the gold in between because it shows that all is not lost upon the first shattering. Celebrating the darkness inside of you can become a major source of authenticity if you can show it in a socially appropriate or professionally appropriate manner in the office or in your social circle. So you're not turning away from it, you're not letting it be too confronting, but you are accepting it, and this will make you very authentic because you're showing you've done the inner work, where a lot of people don't. So it's time for you to let go of societal expectations and become your true self. So you need to unleash your shadow and let it become your strongest ally. When you're ready to work on your emotional intelligence, you should come check out this playlist I have on emotional intelligence. Or if you're already an EQ rock star, you should move on to social intelligence. Or don't. Just keep what you've been doing and getting the results you've been getting. Up to you.